Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in this episode, we are back with Mac and Kerman, who is currently on a suborbital trajectory, actually. Uh, as you can see, it intersects uh, Kerbin over here. Uh, in order to meet with this asteroid, which is also on a suborbital trajectory, destined to smash into Kerbin. Our goal, of course, is to make sure that neither Mac and Kerman nor the asteroid remain in that suborbital trajectory. And right now we are destined to be <laughs> somewhere between 3 and 12 kilometers away from said asteroid. I can't really tell. So uh, maybe a little bit of time warping will help. Oh, even worse, 14. Oh, okay, well I, I didn't want 14, really. This jittery problem is uh, always causing me issues. So perhaps we can do some test burns to see what we can do. Oh, jeez. Just, just turning a little bit seems to change my result. As you can see, 14.1 became 12.8 just because I turned a little bit. Um, I'm going to use RCS and try and tap my way to better numbers. Okay, those look like more single digit. Okay. Well, that's better. Let's see. 3.7. Oh, okay, good. Uh, this is really fine tuning. I think we might need to add an extra digit to the delta V requirements instead of just having point and a single digit. It might be necessary to go to the hundredths of a meter per second of delta V. All right. Uh, well, it is a class D asteroid, so it's going to be really hard to push around. But we do have a lot of fuel, so that's good. And all we can do now is approach. We have a little bit under uh, orange tank of uh, of fuel here altogether in numerous stages. So okay, that's definitely as little time as I can give myself. Okay, this should be retrograde to target, and actually pointing the opposite direction to target. There it is, and let's get rid of this speed uh, it would not be pleasant if the asteroid just decided to ram us in the rear end right now that would not be good but uh, I think we're all right so happens that our prograde retrograde with respect to the target is also in line with the target itself And it seems like the target is actually going faster than us, so we're actually in the direction of motion of both us and the target we have to burn. So that's very interesting. And we're going to burn ourselves into an escape trajectory. But not one that we would ever escape from because we are headed straight for Kerbin. Okay, we can moderate the speed of this. It's still pretty far away. Separation distance is... Actually, let's, let's stop burning for a bit. We've burned away about half of the difference. Why is... Oh, escape trajectory. Oh dear. We had an orient orientation change because we are now headed out. Okay, we're gonna, we're a little bit late on this burn, so we're gonna let the asteroid pass by here. Okay. Okay, the camera's really... Okay, within a kilometer, though. Not bad. Uh, 
Now let's do the necessary preliminaries. Let's get the claw ready and control from it. Don't forget that part. Let's see if we can target the asteroid center of mass. Not yet. Uh, unfortunately, the direction we're traveling in seems to put us in the shadow. Well, makes us shadowed with, thanks to the position of the sun. So while we have our red lights, it's not great. How long do we have? Can't tell, really. Well, this is a very good approach that we managed to get here. Aim directly for the asteroid, managed to get within a kilometer on our first encounter. We've got spotlights on, so the asteroid will be illuminated once we get over there. Okay, with us losing the ability to see our distance to the target, I think we should slow down a bit. Now the question is, how much will this thing weigh? And when you think about it, weight really is the problem because we are concerned about its mass in relation to Kerbin's gravity. Indeed. Uh, what just happened? We're not clawing anything, are we? No. Ah, there we go. I think it's a little bit off-center, but hopefully it'll be alright. Considering how far off-center we were on the previous mission, it should be good. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's plot... Oh, wait. Let's see how heavy this thing is. 486. Well, tiny compared to the last one, right? Okay. So, let's say maneuver around here. And how much would it take... To... Ooh. Well, it takes a lot. But let's try and bring it into orbit, shall we? Um... Yeah. Let's try and bring it into orbit. We don't want to lose this thing just yet. I think it'll be safe as long as we get it. Let's try 30. Let's, let's, will 30 be enough? It's tough to say. Will we even be able to get it that far? Let's, 130 meters per second is not, not uh, cheap. Right now it's on escape trajectory, so 30 seems about right. Well, it seems the maximum that we should be doing. Okay. Actually, uh, maybe... Where is Mac and Kerman's? Okay, Mac and Kerman may be able to get some... Should we try and get this into orbit first and then have Mac and Kerman go out? I think that might be the better idea. Okay, let's see how this thing can move the asteroid. I know we can uh, unlock pivot, but I, I actually want to turn the asteroid. And we'll try and do it without the mod propellant. We'll just use the reaction wheels and do it slowly. Well, we know doing it radially would uh, cost 130. I should try at least to see what a plot that is not radial. 
but uh, just a boost would do. Ah, yeah, it takes much more. Okay, good. Uh, so radial is right. Guess we could name the asteroid. Actually, let's let's find out what happens to it before we name it. Okay, let's let's not name it just yet. If it's if it uh, ends up being that we don't have enough delta v to push it around after all, and with 128 being the cost, that's not entirely impossible. We we might want to name it something very dire, <laughs> if we get a chance to name it at all. Mackin seems to be thrilled. So we'll put it on its what well, we we will put it on whatever trajectory we can put it on, and then we'll have Mackin go out and do some science. Okay, settle this whole picture down here. All right. I think we can go do this burn. Let's have RCS to stabilize things. Let's not go too quickly either. I guess I can unlock pivot now. No. No. Uh, free pivot. Right. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. No, 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 no. Oh, crud. Free pivot is a bad thing. I guess. <laughs> free pivot. No, free pivot and I should have locked pivot. Ah, oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know what? I don't like free pivot. Let's see now, we do have to pay attention to when these tanks go. Because this engine will still read that as fuel because of the center tank. But we need to know when fuel is actually run out in the outer tank so we can dump them and save that mass. Even though the mass of the asteroid is the main thing, uh, there's no reason to be inefficient about this when we're in such a critical time here. As we get close to the marker, I want to burn quicker. As we deviate, I'll throw down. Let's see what... Uh, okay. And I think it's time to drop these other tanks. Yep. Okay, let's stop burning my propellant. I think I can control this with just the reaction wheel. Maybe. Maybe I should go a little bit slower if I'm gonna do that. Next time, more reaction wheels. Okay, that's that stage. Ah, the thunderous roar of these little guys. Rock'em X 2477s. I don't know, it's something in Curl Space Program where the smaller the engine, the more the sound it makes. Obviously, as you get closer to uh, maneuver nodes, fulfillment tends to wander a bit. And that's just natural. And that's what's happening right now. I don't think I'm going to use more mod propellant to chase it right now. I think what instead we'll do is we'll go to low power and see what's actually happening.
Ah, we have a periapsis. We have a periapsis. Let's get rid of the maneuver node. Let's see the periapsis rise. And I don't want to risk this thing crashing into Kerbin in the end, so maybe we'll be very conservative and let it escape if it turns out that... I mean, it's preferable that it escapes rather than smash into Kerbin. So maybe we'll go to 32 kilometers. And this is good because it looks like uh, Mac and Kerman will have plenty of fuel to get back home. So even if the asteroid escapes, he can detach from it and then uh, slow himself down. But you can see this tricky business. Now we see the periapsis. We note that there was only an hour and 12 minutes left. So can't be too slow about these things. Okay, 32 kilometers, hopefully that'll be enough. Uh, Mac and Kerman, EVA. All right. Uh, this part I hate, because uh, I'm never good at this. Okay, forward. No, 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 down, down, forward, forward. Boink, okay, can you? Is there... Okay, take sample. Uh, 60 science, keep data. Uh, okay, stop that. Okay, down. Side. Grab. Board. Okay, we got uh, 60 science for a sample. Well, we haven't got the science yet. We need to bring it back. Must remember that part of the thing. But that's good. Uh, well, uh, we'll, well let's, let's go through the atmosphere before trying to figure out whether to rename this asteroid. So, how do we want to point? Well, we're, we're too far away to really orient properly. I guess we could start. We should definitely point prograde. That way the bulk of the asteroid will be shielding us from re-entry heat such as, as it is. Of course there is no re-entry heat yet, but God, I had my hydras, uh, not hydrazine, monfrofan leaking the whole time. I don't want the parachutes deploying at the same time as these rockets activate. Let's fix that quickly. Okay, looks like we're lined up. Let's see what happens. And I really haven't done any calculations to see whether 32 might be too close or too far. It's tough to do a calculation because we don't have... well we do have enough orbital parameters. We have the orbit orbital speed. Oh heck. Um, we do have enough information. So let me actually uh, use the error breaking calculator on the web so that we don't mess this up completely. Okay, it's a good thing I checked. The error breaking calculator says uh, 35 kilometers. So we need to do a little bit more boosting here. Um, and we actually want to do it in the radial direction, don't we? If we do it straight up, oh no, we, 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 we can do it straight. Okay, that makes it more convenient. It probably costs more, but um, but it is just a fine-tuning thing. So yeah, there's an online page you can go to for arrow breaking, and there is a complication in that is uh, I've got the drag coefficient set for 0.2, which is normal for a ship, but that's not so much for this asteroid. Uh, let me. I might have to pause and try uh, drag coefficient of 1, which might be more appropriate for this this asteroid here. But I, I don't know. Shapes, tough to tell sometimes. Okay, yeah, so let's push this asteroid around a bit.
Okay, so then that let's let me uh, pause and take a look at the, what the site says for a drag coefficient of one. Okay, so for higher drag coefficient, it has it at forty three, but that's a very high drag coefficient. Um, but I, I feel like maybe we should uh, put this up more. And that all that'll mean is that the uh, apoapsis will be higher. So get it about. Uh, let's maybe split the difference and get it up to 36. I mean, not 36, 39. Okay. Mm, need to regain control here. Uh, well, let's just time warp a little bit. Let's bring it closer to the planet before we do anything else. Okay, here we go. Oh, at the other end, we're going to have to boost its orbit out of the atmosphere, too. I hope we have enough fuel for that part. It's a lot of pushing around we're talking about. And remember, this stage that we've got right now is the last stage that's actually meant to manipulate this asteroid. The last stage is meant to bring Mac and Kerman back home. Okay. Should be good enough shielding. Hmm, it seems to be... Oh, no. It's just that during time warp, the marker tends to deviate. I assume that's still the center of mass marker. Well, here goes nothing, Mac and Kerbin. Uh, we should retract our solar panels. Those will get blown off. Uh, do we have an action group for those? Yes, we did. Okay. Okay, they're all packed up. Now, what lucky continent will get to see this pass overhead? Well, this area right here, looks like. Don't know what uh, what to call that part. There should be some effort to name the continents of Kerbin at some point, just so we can talk about it. <laughs> I mean, just so we can say, yeah, yeah, I landed on this this place. Would be helpful. Okay, let's see what uh, what result we'll get from this arrow breaking. Just because you have an arrow breaking calculator doesn't mean that that guarantees anything. Uh, you can see the huge effect that the different drag coefficients has uh, between 0.2 and 1, which is a normal range for drag. 0.2 is more for rocket ships that are built sanely, and uh, 1 for very irregular objects like this. Really, if we were going to try an arrow break with an asteroid like this, uh, the aerodynamic effects would probably spin it completely out of control. But thankfully, KSP aerodynamics doesn't work like that. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, I believe it doesn't. Uh, but uh, if with Ferrum Aerospace, I, there's no way I would be trying this. I don't think Ferrum Aerospace would be happy with this sort of shape. Uh, we would then be in some trouble. Nope, I think we've got orbit. Yes, we do. Okay, now we just need to make sure we get back up. Should be close to our periapsis now. Uh, so uh, Our periapsis dropped a little bit as we got pulled in. Oh, slight influence from the moon there, but past that. 
now on our way back up still being pulled in but probably should end up in a decent orbit okay so that part is done but now once we get to apoapsis we still have to boost the periapsis back up and so i don't want apoapsis to be too close to plant because that'll just make it harder and harder to do that boost Okay, uh, we're out of the atmosphere, so let's plot to see how much this is going to cost me. Okay, not bad. Mm, let's say... 120. Well, we, we could just burn out this stage, since it was meant to be used for this purpose. But as a benchmark, let's say 120. Looks like we're nowhere near the maneuver node. That's to be expected. Okay, around here I want to at least find where my pro uh, not pro grade. Well, really my pro grade vector. It should be the same thing. I should be aiming at my pro grade vector in order to do this burn. But what I meant to say was my maneuver node. Okay, I think we're pretty good to do this burn. Oh dear. Well, how far do we get? Okay, that's fine. I still want to save the final stage for Mackin's return. This is still a safe orbit. It is outside of Kerbin's atmosphere. So yeah, that is a success. We'll actually bring this module down with us uh, because we don't want to leave it as space junk. So with that, I think Mackin Kerbin will get to detach from this asteroid, which he has successfully brought into a safe orbit around Kerbin. Uh, it is time for Mac and Kerbin to return, I think. And doubtless to a great hero's welcome. After all, uh, while Jebediah Kerbin might have proved that space flight was all possible, uh, Mac and Kerbin just saved lives. So, or potentially saved lives. So yes. Oh darn, we forgot to rename the asteroid. Well, we'll have to do that on a separate mission. This uh, Mac and Kerman has done his thing. The asteroid is in its orbit. And all is well. So we'll save renaming the asteroid for a later date. We have to figure out what to do with this asteroid now that it's in such a tight orbit around Kerman. Probably do have to do something with it. Yes, I think uh, there will be future plans, but for now, Mac and Kerbin has to return for his for his parade. Okay. So speaking of which, let's point retrograde now. Okay, and then yes, let's use RCS to pull our orbit in to the suborbital trajectory again. I guess we could have used that fuel for, we could have just used it, well, the, I'd be too tempted to use the RCS to stabilize the whole thing. So, yeah, we could have used this fuel to push it into a slightly higher orbit, but that's fine. This will probably, it might make it a little bit harder to access uh, for timing reasons when matching orbits. But, but hey, a challenge a challenge. We're not here to just uh, play games, are we? We are here to take on challenges. So that'll just be another one of them. Okay, so we're a little trajectory. I, we'll get closer to the planet before dumping this module. Oh, we 
don't have our solar panels out. I don't know if electric charge will deplete before we get back, but might as well extend at least one panel to take care of that. Yeah, it seems to be working. Okay. Okay, let's rotate. Bring in that solar panel. Hello. Make sure there's power up here. Yes, there is. Dump the module. If I can. And hopefully everything else should be alright. Actually, I'm always worried about these rockets now. I think they might have contributed to issues in previous missions. We'll see. Oh, we'll activate these rockets now. Just in case the atmosphere isn't enough to bring us down, which it should be. I think we'll be alright. Can't quite see where we're landing. Uh, looks like over water, most likely. Unless we get over here by that time. Well, sure hope there's a lot of good heat shielding on all these bits sticking out. And that's us ready to land. Not the mountains, not the mountains, please. Okay, yes, it's gonna be water. So yeah, we probably could have pushed that. Uh, well, frankly, with these tiny little thrusters, it would have been so frustrating to push that asteroid around these one kill newton thrusters or oh, uh, they're not one kill newton this version anymore right there oh, how much do they can't really see like this i think they're what two or four yeah these guys would take a long time to push around the 468 was it ton asteroid so We've proven that we can save Kerbin from a Class D asteroid. Haven't tried a Class E yet, ever. Don't really know what the mass of a Class E is. So that's got to be somewhat of a concern. But uh, this is this has been quite a challenge. We didn't start with Class A, that's for sure. We, we, we went to bigger and better things. Okay, I think I should dump some of the fuel, in fact. Just to make me lighter, Mac and lighter for the parachutes. I'm gonna get the parachutes out. Continue this. SASR. OK, 
Okay, let's keep it safe because the parachutes might snap off if we've still got uh, the thrusters going and we happen to start going up. And it looks like our descent speed is uh, is good and safe, so that's nice. Okay, let's recover the vessel before saying anything else. And so there you have it, Mack and Kerbin, the first Kerbal to save Kerbin from an asteroid, the first Kerbal to single-handedly capture an asteroid into Kerbin orbit, and a nice orbit it was in fact. Um, got 60 science, but that's not really a good measure of his accomplishments. Alright, and I think we'll wrap it up here, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.